Welcome! It's the panic button and I'm Nina. I'm Jesse. And today we're reacting to The View because it's always such great content. Oh, The View. Yeah, they're kind of upset with Bill Maher. Article in the New York, I'm sorry, in the Wall Street Journal claims that the shift to the right in this election reveals that Americans view themselves as belonging to a particular economic class more than their race and gender. And Bill Maher said it's not the only thing Democrats got wrong. Take a look. Well, if he's right, then why didn't people vote for the former prosecutor who actually had policy plans to help the working class? I mean... Because she was vice president and she didn't do shit to help the working class. Well, like he started, you lost a crazy contest to a crazy person. Mm -hmm. Which means that you were crazier yeah. than the crazy person. That you're, oh, why didn't they? If they want to be protected, then they should have voted for this person because she was protecting people. But did they feel protected? No. No. That's why they voted the way they voted. You yeah. have no point to be made. She's very cocky. The applause, the applause Ugh. sign is just like, clap now. Clap now because we need well, you to agree. Why didn't they vote for this prosecutor who had plans to do shit? Like she wasn't already in office. Hello. Why right? does the view think the American people are stupid? Because they really do. I believe this. And, uh, yeah, also dismissing everything else that came before the last sentence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Fucking crazy people. I, I just, you know, I know that as a country, it's very difficult for people to, to believe that racism and misogyny, they're just alive and well. I <laughs> Sunny, it never gets old. It's the same never thing. gets old every time. <laughs> it's always so funny every time she says it. Racism and misogyny. Everyone just everyone in America needs to understand that they're all racist and misogynist. Okay, even the ones that voted for Kamala, racist and misogynist. They just don't understand this. I will say yes. There are still niche cases of racism and misogyny, of course, because people are hateful. Like niche. That's, yes, very small. Percentages happen probably every day, mm. but it's not, it's not as big of a problem as you're projecting it to be. Yeah. Like you like to say to other people, but I'm not saying it's not happening. I'm saying it really is happening in smaller and smaller numbers because you sympathize with someone who is your age and a different ethnicity with the same budget you have at the same job. If you walk into a McDonald's, you'll see like, let's say three black people, two Asians and eight white people. Guess what? They all are living the same life. There's no racism there. I think that we don't want to think that about ourselves, our neighbors, our friends. Um, but it, it's my lived experience tells me that it does still exist. You're f***ing rich. Shut up. What, someone called you the N-word once and now everyone's racist. Okay, my lived experience. Listen. Your lived experience is in everyone's lived experience, okay? You live in a multi-million dollar house. Your kids are in very elite colleges. You are a snooty, elite, total bitch who still has her head right up her hoo-ha. You're not at the level of people that you're trying to compare yourself to. There's still going to be way more working class people than there are millionaires and billionaires like yourself. And like I said, you go into any... Any establishment, you will see a mix of races. It doesn't matter. They're all making the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. And that is what really unites or divides someone. Class. Uh, yes. Ec um, economics. No. Uh, the How much money they have. How much money. You know, a lot of people, most people in America are middle and lower class. Slaves don't get paid. In hypoth like, hypothetically, slaves don't get paid, so therefore there is a class divide. Yes. If slaves made money, like if slaves made more money, then they wouldn't have th – this, this, is, this is what happened. We were like, we have to give them money because if not, they're less. And so this is how we got away from this. But now you're saying it, 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 it's reversed. It's not about race anymore. It's about how much you have in your wallet. It's always been like that. Yeah. There just wasn't – there was an added pretense of racism before. You this country that, is way less racist than it used to be. Do you think that maybe they're focusing on race and misogyny because it's easier to focus on that because they know it will never be solved technically instead of focusing on the economic differences of I think classes. that they get a list of words that got them the most money for a month and then mm. they continue to say those again and again. 
That's possible. Even if your lived experience doesn't tell you that it exists. Doesn't, te doesn't tell you that it, even if your lived experience isn't telling you that racism like isn't around, it's still there. This is like the Don Lemon clip when he was interviewing the guy on the street saying, oh, I know you feel like you're poor, but the numbers say you're not. So your lived experience, even though it's telling you you're poor, <laughs> you're actually not. That's literally like saying, oh, you don't believe that people are racist in America because you've lived 30 years and never experienced someone being racist towards you. Crazy. You're wrong. Yeah. Just telling people that they're wrong. You haven't acknowledged the microaggressions. You just haven't noticed it. See, because you're uneducated and unintelligent and well, stupid and we're you. smart. No, you're spoiled and you're acting like jerks. Here comes the graph. Here we go. And, you know, the facts support that. I think we have a graph. If, if you look at the, the, there's a clear racial divide in who voted for the, the uh, pr uh, Trump as opposed to who voted for Com Go ahead. What? Okay, well, I'm going to say something then. This graph, let's compare this graph to 2020's graph, and we'll see how many of those sections of people moved more to the right. Because the side, no, like even the, even white, black, Hispanic, Asian, and other, they all had a right shift. Had a right <clears throat> shift. The whole country pretty much has had a shift to the right, no matter how minuscule. So... This graph is, it's, you got to you use a comparison in order to really show the full picture. Right now, you're showing half of it, and it's very misleading, very misleading. But also, you have to remember that with these numbers, they're, they're not telling you, like, you see the race first, but if you look underneath, that's the amount of people of the population mm -hmm. that are that ethnicity. And I would like to tell you that I am white and Hispanic and Latino. That is something you can be both. Ethnic you are mixed. You have mixed people going in there. Why aren't they showing graphs <clears throat> of people and how much they make and, and who they voted for? Why are they showing the race? Because they want you to focus on that. That's why. That's what they, they yeah, because they, they are race baiting. They are mm -hmm. race they have People racist who policies make like 50k or less a year. Who did they vote for? How many what's the percentage of Democrat to Republican? I don't know, but I'd be interested in I that. would be very interested too, but they but don't I want don't you think to they, focus I don't on think that. they ask you like they ask you if you're uh white, Hispanic, black, Latino, right? They ask you that when you go in. They don't ask you how much money do you make a year. I just don't think it's as important as the as the as the finances. Absolutely. Um, it's very clear. It's, it's not only clear by race, but it's also clear by education. A and so the notion somehow that that is not true, this is by education. Those who... Okay, so first you show the graph about, okay, the color of the person and how they voted. Now it's how smart to stupid they are and how they voted. I would like to... Still no financial. No finances. I would like to point out again percentages. You got to look at the percentages. It looks like a larger percent of Americans either never attended college or attended college and received no degree. That is the largest percent right. of Americans. You know what this proves? It proves that college pushes democratic views. ideas and views. Yeah, that's all that this shows. It also says that if you had an associate's degree, which means you went to like two years of school to get like a trade degree or whatever. I have an you're, associate's degree. You're more than likely voting Republican also, which means there are educated people, absolutely educated people. There are people who attended college but didn't receive a degree. Are you telling me that they are uneducated because they, maybe they got pregnant, maybe had a... You know, what about trade schools? It's crazy. What about trade schools? That's not in there. Does that mean that people go to trade schools are stupid? These ladies, they are just digging that hole deeper. Keep digging. Giving us great content. <laughs> by education. Those who attended college voted for her at a higher degree than those that didn't. I've said that before, and there was so much backlash because I, I think it's an uncomfortable, inconvenient truth about but this country. But his whole point is they didn't vote for him because of racism and misogyny. I think the biggest common denominator in this election is people want a good life and ability to provide for their family. Well, and whether we, black and people, whether we agree or not with Donald Trump's plans, black people they are, thought are that the he was poor, reflective. One of the poorest demographics in this country, but they voted for Kamala Harris. If you really think the vast majority of this country voted because of racism and misogyny, I didn't you're say missing the vast, it. Most of my family, the vast a lot of my family Alyssa, doesn't have college but degrees. But the stats are the stats. But that's not, it doesn't that, say the, I'm the, white, I voted for Donald Trump because of racism. It, it, so you're trying to tell me that if you're white and voted for Trump because of racism, then, then the black percentage 
that voted for Trump is also racist? Is that what I'm supposed to assume? Yeah, I guess so. Because it doesn't make a lot of sense when you put it like that. No, but she thinks she makes sense, and that's all that matters. Whoops, that's all that matters. Another thing is the Hispanic population. Everyone thought that that joke about Puerto Rico yeah, was Yeah, aren't they supposed them. to be poor, too? They are poor. Okay. <laughs> well, black, she had Sunny House and said, well, black people are the most poor. Well, so are... Hispanics. Hispanics. Hispanics are also poor. And they majority voted for Trump. So because they were your about, logic, bitch. It's, yes, they're poor, but it's also about work ethic. Oh, big time. Big to time. To someone who's yeah. in the working class and is willing, like like a, who said, yeah, like a Bill college Mar student. Said, like Bill Maher said, they don't want handouts. Right. Yeah. That's they don't. They, they want to work for they what they integrity. get. They have integrity. Because that's, that's the culture, that, the culture I was raised in is you work for what you get. You work hard and you get it. It's just how it is. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, my sister is half black and that's how she was raised. That's how we were raised. Right. Ethnic people have a, have that kind of desire to go for something and get what they mm-hmm. deserve. And I don't think the college students actually have work ethic because the, because of how much college is nowadays, you have to either get a scholarship or your parents are giving you the money to go. In which case, do you have work ethic? Obviously, I don't think so because you're getting handed shit to you. So you're never going to learn work ethic, which means you probably don't have it. So I'm not surprised why the most snobby, snooty ones are the ones who have had everything handed to them voted Democrat. That's my opinion. What they're not quite grasping is the fact that you don't need to go to college to know what is affecting the country. Nope. You don't need to have a college degree. No. And if the public education system is good enough, then you shouldn't need a college degree to be a functional adult in society. And most people don't need college degrees in order to get very, very good jobs nowadays. No. And in fact, because of the woke washing they're doing, it's causing people to not find jobs. It's a lot of money to invest to not have a job after. Absolutely. Let me jump in here because I think, Sonny, what you say is valid and I think absolutely that is part of the problem. But when we hang our hat on that's the only problem or the main... saying it's the only. I'm not saying you are, but I'm saying the backlash is that when people hang their hat on that being the only reason any criticism of Vice President Harris must be because she's a woman or she's black. I voted for... Thank you. I voted for Hillary Clinton not because she was a woman. She was the most qualified. I voted for Vice President Kamala Harris. I didn't vote for Hillary. I was going to vote for Hillary. But because the media made me believe that she had this in the bag. I'm like, I don't need to vote. And then she lost. So it's kind of funny how this kind of happened again. In I was a way. 17, so I didn't vote for Hillary at right. all because I was a baby. Right. I'm just throwing that information out there. I think it's ironic because it is about qualifications. And she has a good point. If, if she felt <laughs> if she felt that um, that Kamala Harris is more qualified and voted for her, that is her right as an American. Does the country agree with her? Not as much as she'd want, but that that's that's what happens. And you don't need a college degree to know how your wallet's feeling, especially <laughs> we're in New York State. Yep. The minimum wage has been increasing because the fast food worker is not being able to live. I'm not saying have a luxurious life mm-hmm. working a regular job. Just have a comfortable living. Not paycheck to paycheck. Not pay, just Just so you can have a comfortable life and afford a house. With your family. That's all I'm saying. And I understand that some people get stuck in jobs like Walmart Uh or McDonald's or or shitty fucking jobs like that. And I just want them to be able to sustain their life at a job like that. Because some people can't achieve more than that. I know. And the worst part is is that you're working a job that you hate to not be able to live. And that's the most depressing thing. You should at least have enough money to like pay, pay your bills. You like, know, but that would make anyone miserable. Exactly. Exactly. As someone who's worked those jobs. And but call them jobs, racist, right? But, and misogynist. They, that's, and that's what they're not understanding. The voice of the people who don't have the privilege that you have or don't have the mental capacity you have because IQ is a real thing. And some people are challenged in life. Why can't we support those people and still support others? <laughs> and not call them names. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Because 
more of my values fell in line with what she stood for. So all of that can be true. There is something here to the socioeconomic class, yeah. though, that is crossing racial divide in academic and education, too. Americans with a college degree 30 years ago were roughly 20% of the population and held the same percentage of household wealth as those without a degree. Yeah. 30 years later, this is important. Americans with a t college degree account for 38% of the population and 73% of the household wealth. The haves and the have-nots have gone so far apart that they are rising up right now and they cross every line of our well, democracy. Okay. In A, Sarah, thank you. Yes, that's what we've been trying to say. We've been trying to, like, bash this into their heads and they just keep saying race and misogyny. Viva la France! Viva la France! <laughs> the working class oh. is rising. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, it's true, because at the end of the day, we we can't live like no. We can't live with no. the rich be getting richer and insisting that we're the bigots and we're the hateful people because they want more money. I want money. I don't want all the money. I just want enough to live comfortably. What's wrong with that? Nothing. <laughs> You're a good person. You deserve it. You work hard. And most Americans are like that. They work hard. They go to mm -hmm. work. They come home. But it's the selfish people. You want to know why? Funny. You want to know why people aren't starting families? It's because they don't they have the money. It. They don't have the money. And and any logical person who can't afford to keep themselves up would not have a child. And those are the people you want to have children. And just they're say, logical. Yeah. <laughs> but to say, I've heard this a lot. That they'll they'll say, oh, that's just an excuse. No, it's not. I know that anyone who says it's just an excuse is not struggling financially right now. It is real. It is. Okay? Snap out of it. I would say to Bill Maher, who I like, whose show I've been on several times, that maybe, just maybe, when you live life as a woman and as a woman of color, you feel it and you know it a little bit more than a white man does in America. And so... I'm not saying a white man who is making like 12 grand a year, what your struggle is worse than his? Come on. I'm a woman of color. <laughs> I am a l woman of, uh, what do they call it? Gender, uh, non -conform gender non conforming woman yep. of color mm -hmm. in America. And let me tell you, my wallet feels it. Yes. Feels hardcore. And so please stop. Please stop identifying yourself as someone, as a woman of, of color, color in America because I'm fucking sick of it too. It's old. I don't care. I don't know. If I, I love the clip of Raven Simone on Oprah saying, I am an American. I am not an African American. I am from Louisiana. Yeah. That's where I'm from. I am an American. That is it. That's the truth right there. And Raven Simone, I'm sure, has her own crazy fucking shit she's done, but. Phew. I'm glad she said that because people need to hear that. Hell yeah. Especially people in the black community. There's such a push for them to be, and I'm sorry if I'm speaking out of turn, but there's such a push for them to like associate with their blackness yeah. when they should just associate with being themselves. You know, he says that folks see everything through the lens of racism and sexism. Not everything. But no, but you bitches a do. Of, <laughs> a lot of you guys do. But if you're not seeing racism and sexism in America, then you need to clean your lenses. But yeah. Because, you know, so I, I... If you're not listening to us and seeing racism and misogyny and everything, then you're stupid and you need to listen better. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Uh, uh, do you live in the real world? Because I do. I do. No. I live in the poor real world. No one in the real world would wear a cheetah print like that. No one in the real world has time. Okay. No, nah, yeah. Time. This is, this is for racism and misogyny. Like I said, they're telling the person who's like 30 years without experiencing any issues that they are experiencing issues. And this is when they bring up the microaggressions and like if someone didn't hold the door for you, they're racist. It's, it's such like, a privileged, privileged thought process. It, it, like, People who are who are struggling financially don't. They, I'm, I'm serious. Majority don't think like this. They can't afford to. This is privileged thinking. It's very privileged thinking. It's crazy that they can just, like, just go on TV, say this, shit, and make millions of dollars, and I have to go to work forty hours a week. Right. <laughs> hey, we'll be struggling. Okay, four hours a week, and no one's gonna lot. make her cupcakes. Oh no! <laughs> Heaven forbid. Let's just shit on the working class, why don't we? I, you know, look, I, 
This is something that I, I also find uh, interesting, that when Democrats and liberals talk about race or sexism, it's in immediately labeled as identity politics, which has a negative connotation. It's a term that Republicans have uh, coined, and it's been very... What is it about that, if not identity? That's what it is. Do you... I'm sorry. An American policy refers to all Americans. If you're going to specify blacks and Latinos and, and Asians, then it sounds like you're targeting a demographic based on their... Identity. Identity. Not the fact that they were born in America, but but because they have a different skin color. Mm -hmm. That sounds a little racist, don't you think? I would have to say so. <laughs> uh, coined, and it's been very effective. But when Donald Trump goes to Miami and talks to Cubans, that's not identity politics. When Donald Trump goes to Dearborn, Michigan and promises Arabs something, that's not identity politics. It is identity politics. He's playing the game you're playing. <laughs> he's he's like, just way better he's at like, it. Oh, you Cubans! They don't love you like I love you. I love you better. He's just now playing identity politics. This is his game. This is what he's always done. Yeah, he's going to them and being like, "Hey, I, know I been, can do this for you." I've been talking to you, but let me talk to you. Donnie Trump is gonna treat you so much better. <laughs> that is like what he's. That's what he's done. Yeah. his whole time running since 2016. We're not oblivious <laughs> to who Donald Trump he's is. A pander. And he how panders. he is. We know what he does. But he he, he over exaggerates. He we has get every it. Every intention of following through on his pandering. There you go. There you go. But we're stupid. We're dumb. <laughs> Identity politics when he goes to Jews and promises them the opposite. So two thirds of this country does not have a four year degree. And in fact, 38% who do live nine years longer than those who don't. Something is happening in this country. It's a lot of my family who don't have four year degrees. They may not even have associate's degrees, mm -hmm. who they're working harder than they ever have. They have multiple jobs and they can't get ahead. This is a real divide here. And when they're told, you know what? We do care about border security, not because we're xenophobic, but because the country is paying more money to house and to help those people. Then why are the Republicans against dollars. giving people a living wage? Why are the, are, is the and, Republican Party and by the way, I don't think they would be if you said <laughs> border, border and living wage. I think we could totally get both of those because it sounds like yeah. Donald Trump's biggest thing is he's going to help your pocket. And it sounds like that means living wage. <laughs> If I'm not stupid. <laughs> yeah. But then again, Reducing who am I? the cost of things as well. I'm just an uneducated Hispanic woman. <laughs> I didn't go to college. I attended college but didn't receive a degree because I didn't even go to one class. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just said, I decided financially it'd be better to join the workforce and yeah. not take on the loans. I paid $500 to not go to college and now I have no student loans. And I think it's it's a good decision. You're not in debt. Again, I'm generally, I'm generally for a minimum wage, but a lot of these folks who work as small businesses, not the big corporations, are smart enough to know if there's 50 people at my shop and they raise the minimum wage, a lot of us are losing our jobs. I like what you said because as a woman, I see things differently. As yeah. a black woman, I see things and hear things differently. Yeah, I maybe. hear when people don't believe that there's an issue. I'm going to say there's a giant, a uh, giant difference between a rich black person and a poor black person. And what Whoopi and Sonny are trying to do is say that they're the same and they are so different and they don't get it. And I think that's another reason why they got their ass handed to them in this election. 100%. So what did you guys think? Did, did you think that they made sense? Do you think that they're talking out of their ass? I'm curious to know. Do you want more of our views on The View? Right. These ladies are great for content. Let us know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And join our memberships to keep this channel going. Join our memberships. We really appreciate it and you get perks. Thank you. Perks.